Hey folks, Mark Miller from Solar World here, trying to keep you guys updated and all the things that we do around here. Uh, like and subscribe, will you? Uh, it definitely lets us know that we're doing a good job. If you have any comments, leave them. All right, so here we have a signature solar special. Uh, I believe 20 solar panels, 455 watt monocrystalline, non-bifacial, sitting up on top of this patio cover uh, roof area. Ran in PVC conduit, one and a half inch, down to this box right here. Uh, this is a off-grid application, no grid tie. Uh, as you can tell, we came straight down with that box, um, with the PVC uh, Schedule 40 conduit to that junction there. We also have another funky transition right here that we couldn't, uh, PVC didn't have a 120 degree elbow. So we had to pretty much make one out of flex for this hard transition. So we have DC power coming down into the junction box, going up, and we're trying to keep it out of this uh, this wet area uh, with this dome and with this metal building here. It likes to get uh, pretty uh, wet and moist, uh, so the customer said. So we kept everything up on the concrete and then came up into the main system. As you can tell over here, we have uh, two EG4. These are the 6.0s. Um, they're individually L1, L2, working together, making 240, but they're individual circuits. Uh, again, we have PV 1 and 2 on the MPPT 1 and 2, which is inside the inverter. And the same thing for the secondary inverter. As you can tell, everything's labeled, tagged, and up to code here for DC disconnects. They, uh, they bought the, the battery cabinet, uh, but didn't have a door, so we went ahead and supplied them with that door. There are four EG4 5.125KW uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. These are the BMS communication cables. As you can see, the yellow cable goes up to the inverter on each one. Um, technically, you only need one, but we like to have the secondary one as well if it's coming off the cam. Uh, so here on the liquid uh, display here, come on, take a second. Okay, so BMS showing that the battery is about 56% right now. Uh, they are charging at um, you know one to two amps. Um, lot of sun production today and now it's pretty much at the end of it so they are pretty much topped off for this afternoon so i got 60 on him 56 on him 57 on him there's a little bit of a difference because uh we were testing with him and so there's about five percent more battery uh, life on this battery than the rest of them simply because we were only turning him on in the beginning uh we do have two of the charge control 48 volt uh 18 amp uh lithium uh, chargers sitting here on this uh, this bottom bay now normally we would like to put it at the um, um, the bus bars on the sides here but there's a reason for this uh, the cables did not stretch first of all I'm not going to cut into this material even though I've done it in the past that's not the point uh, so this will charge this bottom bank and work its way up to the BMS cable instead of trying to equalize there's going to be a lot of charging coming off of this uh, setup here so we got the two batteries, uh, two chargers, and we just plug it into this outlet right here, and we are golden. So uh, the main central hub right here is a 240 volt, uh, 100 amp sub panel. We have L1 going into him and L2 into him, and then our neutral ground bonding bars are inside. Um, DC supply coming in. So this is a firebacker that we put on here, uh, just to kind of keep things extra safe and precautious in the event of a fire god forbid right um but shit happens so all right now we go out from that central hub power into that junction box that you see up at the top there and uh then that one comes down and goes right back pretty much in the same spot and then he whips down now we didn't want to dig into the grass into the dirt area again we're out in the middle of the woods out in rust texas it is a floodplain, uh so we tried to avoid it as much as possible uh coming down to the main um, part of the patio cover right off the post here not too far of a dig it was only about 20 foot so at this point we're able to make an ac disconnect because all the power supply coming in from this building is actually right behind that door um and then the building itself the, the actual input for the uh, for the shop is on its own separate circuit coming off of this power junction so basically it's a y right they wanted to supply the power uh, to the whole facility. Uh, we would have to stick the equipment out here or run lines and things like that. 
to be able to supply that. Uh, the automatic transfer switch, which is not rated for outdoor rated, uh, could not be out here. So, plan B. We got the power output to make it to code, as if we're doing grid tie, right? Because if we need grid tie, we need to be able to shut that sucker off in case fire department comes out here. So we went ahead and labeled everything as if it was on a grid tie system to let the fire department know to shut this off and that will disable the house uh, completely 100%. Um, as you can see, oh yeah, well, I'm not gonna open that up. I already have everything in operation. Let me go ahead and take you inside real fast. Give me a second. All right, so we're in this tight little closet here. This is the uh, gener Generac transfer switch. Uh, we like to incorporate this with all of our off-grid uh, applications and uh, grid tie as much as possible. So here's our hammer, or sorry, our hammer. I said that really funny. Uh, that is inside that body now, so we can't just yank it out. So we can go up and down just like the little functions. Uh, we grand total moved 12 switches. We did put an EMP system on the L1 and L2 coming into the lines. In our main panel, basically the ones that are taped are the ones that we took off. The one that's uh, supplying the Generac transfer switch is this one right here, the top leg, which is a 70 amp double pole. Uh, we have four gauge 80 amp wire sitting on this uh, circuit. Uh, so how this works, and I'll go ahead and explain this in the future, um, in future videos that is, how the transfer switch actually works. Um, I don't, I'm not going to open all everything up. I just put it all up. So anyways, uh, so the transfer comes down and it just goes right back up basically. And this right here, as you can see, the lights shuts off, turns right back on. There's our switch. Main operations is right there. Main incoming power to going out, out power. And then we also have our, uh, our EMP protection, like I said, L1, L2, which is inside the actual transfer switch itself, not isolated to the actual circuit. Uh, let me go ahead and show you something else. I forgot to mention this part. So anyways, uh, we have ingoing and outgoing power, which we've already discussed. And then uh, again, I didn't want to trench over to this dome. This dome is made of concrete with reinforced steel. Uh, it's pretty much like uh, Superman's fortress. We're not going to necessarily get into it very easily. So I had to figure out a way to get in there or drill or pilot a way to get into this concrete slab, which is pretty thick. Didn't want to do all that. So we came, instead of digging through here, we went up from that junction box. Everything's in the junction box, sorry. And then we ran PVC right up underneath the gutter aspect. Uh, the gutter's already protected. It's already sealed and everything. Come down with our flex coming in to the main system. Then we came around the back end part with a sealed flex. And then we, uh, we came in through this main junction uh, hub, as you can see right here. So this was already in place for main incoming power. We basically just had enough line uh, space available to be able to do that. Uh, let's see what else. So 20 solar panels, two EG4 6.5s, 6.0s, automatic transfer switch, 100 amp, Disconnect for safety, labels, next step. Customer was asking, uh, of course, you know, it's hard to get off grid with everything we're trying to do. Uh, power consumption, wells, things like that. So the next step, um, what I'm explaining to the customer here is we're probably gonna do a grid tie setup to help supplement the power supply that is uh, going to be needed for the air conditioner uh, instead of dumping a massive amount of money into batteries and more inverters and panels and all that jazz let's go ahead and cut out the um, the main culprit right there which is the water heater and the air conditioner so this system does not have the air conditioner water heater central heating system you know things like that because it's, it's all electric no gas um we were originally wanting to put the uh the well and pump onto the system um, but it's already pretty much maxing itself out with the four batteries and two inverters. So we'll need additional panels and inverters for this next setup. And I am very excited to uh, give you guys an update on that particular uh, setup when it's ready. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, submit. I'm always here to answer any questions. Um, um, other than that, uh, thanks. God bless. I bumble a lot and I hate the camera. So I hope you like it.